All right, let's move on to the next game here. And that is going to be the Dolphins and the Niners. The upset of the week, bar none, I feel like. The Dolphins went to San Francisco and fucking rolled the 49ers by a final score of 43-17. to Both teams are now 2-3 and three on the year. Ryan Fitzpatrick, 22 of 28, 350 yards and three touchdowns. Miles Gaskin, we need to talk about him. Per usual, I get to I get to talk about my gushing love for him, uh, which makes me really excited. 16 carries, five of five through the air, 91 total yards, and a touchdown. Was able to get the goal line work because Jordan Howard was a healthy scratch in this game. On the receiving options for the Dolphins, Preston Williams, welcome to 2020. Four four receptions, five targets, 106 yards, and a touchdown. Devonte Parker, two of three targets, 50 yards and a score. For the 49ers, Jimmy Garoppolo was back. He played the first half, but he looked utterly abysmal. 7 of 17 for 77 for 77 yards and two interceptions. He was benched uh, coming out of the locker room at halftime and CJ Beathard w- replaced him. Uh, and he on like Garoppolo wasn't Garoppolo was benched in part to two reasons. It was both the fact that he played bad, but you have to remember he was also coming off that an- that high ankle sprain, and there were actually questions of whether or not he would be able to play in this game. Uh, so it looked like that, uh, you know, he gave it a go. Didn't look good, and the team's best option felt like they just needed to pull him at that point. The Dolphins came through and were shredding them uh, already by halftime, and might as well just, like, there's no need to put Jimmy Garoppolo uh, back out there. Raheem Mostert, 11 carries in his return off of that uh, off of that knee sprain. Uh, three targets, three receptions for 109 total yards. And in the receiving game, uh, Kendrick Bourne, two targets. I'm sorry, two receptions, four targets for 30 yards and a touchdown. Debo Samuel uh, only had uh, actually Debo Samuel had eight targets in this game. Excuse me. He is back up to full health. Uh, 88. I'm sorry. Yes, 80, 88 uh, percent percent of snaps played. So if you held out on Debo Samuel and you put him in your IR, if you didn't have an open IR spot, but you still held on to him, uh, Debo Samuel is coming. And that's really exciting. Uh, Brandon Ayuk didn't play well, all things considered. Only hauled in uh, three catches for, 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 for 44 yards. And this is just one of those things where even George Kittle had a down week as well. Like I said, the Dolphins came through and just absolutely smacked them uh, from start to finish in this game. Things I want to talk about. Um, I'm not concerned about the 49ers offense moving forward. Uh, CJ Beathard, fine quarterback, like not fine enough to where like the, like that's the thing. Uh, actually it was Matthew Barry talked about this earlier. He's like the gap between Jimmy Garoppolo, Nick Mullins and CJ Beathard, like it's not significant enough to really alter your outlook on, uh, Devo Samuel, Brandon Ayuk or George Kittle. So if you were starting them, you're going to start them. And if you weren't, you weren't. It really is just, it just doesn't do anything. It doesn't move the needle in that way. Um, talking about the running backs, though, Marheem Moster comes back, leads the team in carries. Uh, Jarek McKinnon, how many snaps did McKinnon play? I'm actually very curious about this. Yeah, so this is actually uh, the big story here is Jarek McKinnon wasn't involved. <laughs> This is what I was talking about this week when I said you can't play Raheem Moster or or Jarek McKinnon in this matchup, and that sucked. When, that like that sucked saying it, and I understood when I said it. I'm like that doesn't make a whole lot of sense, right? This Dolphins defense is bad. You should absolutely be starting them, but no, you you shouldn't have. And the reason why is because we didn't know what this 49ers offense was going to, was going to look like with the return of Mostert. We didn't know what the snap percentage was going to was going to look, was going to look like, excuse me. And we didn't know what the usage was going was going to be. All like in all honesty. So to see Mostert come back and take over as a lead dog, that's encouraging. Mostert fine start moving forward. But again, you have Jarrett McKinnon playing 25% of snaps, only one carry, gets four targets, uh when he is on the field, doesn't do anything with them. Uh Starting Jarek McKinnon absolutely absolutely killed you uh, this week, you know. And I, I'm one of those guys where if, if I got things wrong, I'll tell you I got it wrong. This one, I think I got right. Um, Mostert came through, like I said, 13 points. Uh, he was fine if you ended up playing him. But if you played McKinnon or if, or if you played uh, Jeff Wilson, who actually got four carries in 27 yards, uh, and you were just trying to decipher and figure out what this 49ers run game was going to be, Hopefully you had Mostert. That's all I'm going to say. Hopefully you had Mostert. Uh, speaking of running games, Miles Gaskin, baby. Miles 
fucking Gaskin. Let's give it back up to him. Another game of 60 plus percent of snaps, 16 carries, also five receptions. So literally getting 20 plus touches now at this point, almost every single game it feels like. Um, he is just, he is the guy here. And that is so exciting because he was another waiver wire. He was just another waiver. He was another waiver wire ad. Uh, the speculation this off season was it was it was it would be Jordan Howard. Again, I'll tell I'll tell you when I was wrong. This off season, I said you need to go get Jordan Howard, uh, and that quickly realized that that was not that was not a good idea. Uh, luckily, Miles Gaskin was completely undrafted everywhere, so I quickly corrected course and was like, you need to go get Miles Gaskin uh, instead. So Gaskin gets the goal line work with Jordan Howard being a healthy scratch. In fact, um, I think can I? Uh, let me just look at Bowtrack. There was a tweet that came out earlier regarding Jordan Howard's contract situation. Um, let me see. Give me one second here. How often does he tweet? Does he tweet a lot? Can I easily find this? Um, one more second. I, come on. Evidently not. Okay, but I basically saw this tweet that said that um, Jordan Howard's contract is basically non-guaranteed and they have an out after this year. Uh, it was a two-year deal, which I already knew. Uh, and so basically what this means is they, with Jordan Howard being a healthy scratch, they lose nothing by it. And so this is absolutely going to be Miles Gaskin's team and his job going forward. Uh, it's officially Miles Gaskin season. I've only been saying it for the past four weeks. Uh, we're here. We are officially here. Hopefully you were able to go pick him up uh, off your waiver wire a few weeks ago. Cause if you have, you got it. You got a top 24 running back on your hands. Miles Gaskin is currently number 15 in PPR formats. He's actually 17. That can't be No, I'm sorry. He's 27 in standard league. So there's a lot more value in PPR formats because he has that pass catching running back as well. He's a three down back guys. And yes, Matt Burita is involved. I'm not too concerned about it because he's still getting, uh, you know, he's still getting 20 plus touches every single game. Devontae Parker, auto start every single week. Mike Kosicki. We need to talk about him. He actually played well this game. Uh, five receptions for 91 yards. He finally came through for you. Preston Williams came through in a big way as well. Um, these are just two guys where you have to make decisions on, all things considered. Uh, Preston Williams is a deep bench stash, all, like in my opinion. I don't know if you're ever confident fully starting him in a week, but with bye weeks, injuries, and COVID, there are weeks where maybe you have to, and you have to like, like, like again, I've, I, the, even myself, I, but like myself and other people, I've seen the tweets of I've had to start X player in a matchup this week. I, if it weren't for if it weren't for Raheem Mostert coming back, I know somebody would have had to start Gus Edwards as their running back too. Things are this dire right now in the fantasy football landscape that yo sometimes you gotta bite the bullet and you gotta start uh, who you gotta just in order to fill a roster. Uh, for example, I know somebody, and it was actually somebody in my dynasty league. Who had to start? Let's uh, let's pull this up here. Um, I know somebody who had to start Matt Burita and Jordan Wilkins at the running back position because Melvin Gordon and Damian Harris had their games postponed. Like we are in just a time where you need to be flexible. You have to have depth to your roster, and you have to have guys who who you are comfortable starting on any given week. And maybe Preston Williams actually does fit that mold. But going back to Mike Kosicki, um. Mike Kosicki actually only played 43% of snaps in this game. Like, I don't know. I, I don't know what to do with him. I really, really don't. Didn't find his way into the end zone. I, I just don't think you can rely on Kosicki week in, week out. He's not the tight end option that we all thought he would be. Uh, but it is nice to see, to see him have some sort of fantasy relevance in this matchup.